Please put your hands together for Sam Dingham, everybody. I had been living in New York for a couple of years, and my acting career was not going quite the way that I had envisioned. Specifically, uh, my, the extent of my theatrical experience was originating the role of nightclub patron number three in the off-off-Broadway debut of Sex in the City, the play. <laughs> it was time to make a change. Um, so I thought, I want something safe. I want something secure. Uh, but I couldn't find anything like that, so I became a taxi driver. Um, and at first, that was actually great, because it turned out I was actually like a little bit good at it. And I remember this one night, uh, I was driving home, I was driving along the Grand Central Parkway in my cab, and I looked out the window just as I got to the bridge, and I saw the New York City skyline, and there was all this purple and orange with the sun going down, and I thought, that's New York City, man. There's crazy stuff going on there with crazy people doing crazy things all day long. And in some small way, it can't happen without somebody like me, a cab driver. And then I actually said out loud, I belong here. <laughs> and it was the first time I'd ever felt that way. And the idea that I could be happy doing something besides acting hit me really hard. But then uh, a few months later, I was struck by something else, a Jeep Wrangler. Um, which hit me at 40 miles an hour as I was pulling onto 79th Street. And to make matters worse, it was being driven by a woman with no seatbelt on and a baby in her lap. Fortunately, somehow, everybody was okay. And a few minutes later, I was standing on the sidewalk and I was filling out a police report. And she came up to me and she was crying, her baby was screaming. And she said, can you please just talk to my husband, please? And she handed me a cell phone. So I said, Okay. And I took the phone and I said, hello? And this voice says, uh, hey, uh, my friend, I understand we had a little bit of an incident. <laughs> and I was like, y yeah, we did. He goes, well, um, my wife, uh, she doesn't have a driver's license. So my insurance company, uh, they're not going to like this too much if you know what I'm saying. I did know what he was saying because it was exactly what he was saying. So he says, uh, he says, listen, uh, I want to make you a little deal. Uh, I run this kind of independent body shop up here in the Bronx. Why don't you bring the cab up here? I'll fix it up. I'll throw you $75. Everybody wins. So I thought for a second, and I realized if I took the total taxi back to the garage and showed it to my boss, Sonny, I was going to lose my job. And my life as I knew it was over. So I said to this guy, Okay. And I gave him my phone number. He gave me the address of the garage. I hung up, and I handed the cell phone back to his wife, who was as shocked as I should have been <laughs> that I had taken this deal. <laughs> then another very fortunate thing happened, which is that I got back to my cab, and it wouldn't start. And that meant that I had to call the garage's tow truck, and that meant that it took me back to the garage, and I remember I got there, and there was this big ramp off the street, uh, this big ramp that went up, and it ended at Sonny's office. And I remember walking up that ramp with my head hung, just thinking to myself, that's it, man. New York wins. I can't do this. But then I showed Sonny the police report, and he was thrilled. He said, this is great. I'm going to put in the insurance claim right now. Here. Then he gave me the keys to a brand new cab and sent me right back out like nothing had happened. So I was back working immediately. And I was driving around, and, and a couple hours later, my phone started to ring. And I thought, this is karma. I did the right thing. I'll bet that phone call is from the casting director of the public theater. <laughs> it was not. It was the husband of the, wife who, uh, the woman who had hit me. And he was not too pleased with my decision to turn him over to the insurance company. And this is the voicemail that he left me. You motherfucker! You think you're gonna get away with this bullshit? I got your phone number, I got your medallion number, I'm gonna find you, and you're going down, asshole. Now I got this message right as I was sitting in the worst traffic jam of my entire life on 41st Street. And just as it ended, a Coach USA bus lurched into my lane and smashed into the side of my taxi. 
Meaning that I had now in the same day wrecked two taxis and incurred the wrath of a small time mobster. And I just lost it. I started pounding on the steering wheel and screaming, what the fuck is wrong with this city? This is a nightmare. I thought I belonged here. I don't belong here. I'm gonna die here. And my life has been worth nothing. I was so upset that I forgot I had a passenger. And because this is New York City, her response to her cab driver having a psychotic break was to go like this. <sighs> so that night, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to go home, I was so scared. So my friend was having a birthday party and I went to the birthday party and I drank so much. And I said to her, my friend was having the birthday, I told her the story and I said, isn't that crazy? I'm probably gonna die. And she said, Sam, that is crazy. You're probably gonna die. She said, listen to me. My company is hiring an administrative assistant. When you get home tonight, send me your resume. I was like, okay. So I did and three days later, I was an administrative assistant. I never got back in the driver's seat of another taxi ever again. And thank you. I appreciate that. And so does my family. Uh, and now, uh, for six years, I've been filing expense reports and sitting on the phone with travel agencies, and I'm safe and I'm secure, and I've never again been in as much danger as that day on 79th Street. But I've also never felt as good as I did that night on the Grand Central Parkway. Thanks. Damn!